Hi, everyone. Um, hands up, who went to the Chicago event? Did anyone go to the Chicago event? Okay, a couple of people. Um, what really, really impressed me with that event was actually the Rennie Murphy presentation when she was talking about NSA Barbie. Um, if you get the opportunity, download the video. It is A, terrifying, B, hilarious, and C, really informative. So I'm hoping, hoping that we're going to get some of that for today. So anyway, I threw away all my corporate slides and all we're getting is pictures. So what we're going to be talking about is why companies go into RPA, Robotic Process Automation, um, and why they're wrong. So this came from a conversation that I had with one of the Forrester analysts while I was there called Dave Johnson. Uh, and Dave is working on culture. And he and I are going to be working on a, on a joint paper together on exactly this, because we were going in this direction, he was going in this direction. Actually, we're now merging towards it. Um, so, as Diego said, um, the adoption of new technologies has to be embedded as part of your organization, has to be embedded as part of that change process. Use the new technologies and use them right, as he said. Um, but you are going to need some help. I love this slide. You do need some help. Um, and that help is provided by robots. The trouble with robotic process automation is that it has robot at the front, and it confuses the hell out of everyone, which is why I never, ever, ever use a picture of a robot when I'm talking about what we do as an organization. But RPA is basically taking the structured data, the rules-based activities within your organization and across your organizations, and automating that. As Diego said, automate what you can. In fact, one of our competitors, Automation Anywhere, says that anything that can be automated will be. So that's the world in which we currently live. Uh, and the adoption rate has been quite staggering. Everyone wants to get on board. Um, HFS, one of the uh, other uh, analyst firms, has done a study recently where 81% of the 1,200 people that they, and these are enterprises, that they polled um, are going to either significantly or dramatically increase the adoption of RPA within their organizations. This is happening, and it's happening now. Um, this was from Everest, actually. Um, this was a webinar that took place last month. And there were a 1,000 people on the call. Uh, and the question was, how much is RPA automation going to grow within your organization uh, in 2018? Nothing gets anywhere close. My background is outsourcing, BPO. Um, and even at the fastest rate of growth within the services businesses, didn't get anywhere near 100 to 500 or even 500 plus percent. Um, to give you an example of what we're actually seeing, um, this building that you can see is actually the corporate headquarters of Admiral, which is a, a UK insurance organization. Um, it's got 12 floors, so think about mental picture. It's got 12 stories. Uh, it's actually two stacks of six, but you get the idea. They have a different department on every floor. 18 months ago, Neil Davis started with one evaluation license, one new iPath license, to try it out. Uh, now they're in 10 of the 12 corporate departments, and that's everything. It cuts across every part of their business, from first notice of loss, dealing with brokers, claims processing, corporate functions, finance, accounting, procurement, HR, and so on and so forth. And also customer service operations, so the call center operations, every single part of the organization. And us as an organization, we've grown from seed funding to unicorn in 36 months. 36 months. And the reason that we've done that is the adoption rate of RPA is so dramatic. It's not just us, it's our competitors are growing very fast too. Um, so one of the great myths about, about, uh, about automation is that, uh, and the reason that most organizations go into it in the first place is to reduce headcount. And they are wrong. Because what happens is that the value of the people in your organization is much higher than you think it is. The way I describe it is, just because someone's doing a monkey job doesn't mean they're monkeys. So what organizations have found is that it's actually improving and increasing the number of people in your organization because these people are becoming more effective. Uh, the Times, two days ago, uh, on Wednesday, there was an article about automation and its impact on the, uh, on the economy uh, in the UK. There was one set of companies that are really crapping themselves 
about automation, and that is the recruitment companies. Because organizations where they've continually churn into those organizations and provided people to them are reusing the people they've got and are able to grow and be more agile, as Diego said, but use those same people. Uh, think about it this way. We talked about, um, uh, yesterday, Adrian talked about from KPMG, good presentation, um, talked yesterday about how this is the fourth industrial revolution. So the first industrial revolution was the invention of the spinning jenny, uh, 1763 or something like that. Um, so prior to that, 98% of us humans work the land. 98% work the land. Does that mean that 96%, because it's now two around the world, does that mean that 96% of us are now unemployed? No, of course not. So this is really important. When organizations say, we want to go into automation to reduce headcount, it does reduce it over time, but that's done through natural attrition. It's not done through mass redundancies, except for Indian outsourcing companies, but we won't go there. Um, Melanie of Google uh, is one of our backers. Uh, capital G is, uh, is the um, Alphabet's uh, venture arm. They've backed 29 companies. We're one of them. Um, Melanie said that, that automation is not the important thing. It's getting that kernel, getting that ROI, that return on investment. And the great thing about automation, intelligent automation, so that's a combination of RPA and AI, is that the ROIs are really good. And it's relatively quick, and it's relatively cheap to implement compared with big IT projects. So that's what's really driving this. Um, another good slide. Um, and this is important, actually. So RPA is really good at dealing with structured data, rules-based activities. It is completely crap at dealing with unstructured data because the exception levels are too high. So what we are doing is we're working with organizations that focus on that space. Um, was anyone at COGX this week in, uh, in London? Um, it was an amazing event. Um, there were about 7,000 people there, a whole load of AI startups. Um, and those are just the sort of organizations that we are going to bake into our platform because it allows you to deal with the unstructured data in your organizations. And we're already starting that. The latest release of our software came out um, yesterday, uh, day before yesterday, which deals with some of that with machine learning and natural language processing, intelligent OCR, and so on. Um, the reason that JPEG, JPEG and, uh, and um, PDF are up there is because PDF natively, native PDF is structured data. JPEG isn't. The outsourcers love us because it allows them to deal with their data over Citrix. So um, Citrix, you're just looking at a picture, a bitmap. Um, for humans to manipulate the data on that, it's dead easy. For robots, it's a nightmare. Um, we're particularly good at that. So dealing with the unstructured data means that you can automate more of your processes. It really is as simple as that. So when your boards say, we need AI, we need AI in our business, most of them have no idea what AI means um, because it's a combination of those tools. But by combining those tools, it creates something quite interesting. Um, I did a webinar at, uh, for the Shared Service and Outsourcing Network about three weeks ago. Uh, there was about 800 people on the call. And I asked, uh, I did a live poll in the middle, said, what are you doing with AI? Uh, and I gave them four answers, you know, nothing at POC or pilot stage, in production, or extensively. The answers were almost exactly the same to the percentage as the answers were for RPA two years ago. Last year, I did some research with um, an analyst from an organization who I can't mention here. Um, and uh, we worked out the adoption rate for RPA across uh, enterprises, that's a billion dollar plus businesses around the world, was at between three and 5%. Now, today, it's 15%. If any of you have read um, Crossing the Chasm by Jeffrey Moore, 15 to 18% is when any new technology, forget about RPA, any new technology moves from early adopters into the mainstream. So all the growth that we've seen so far will pale into insignificance as more and more organizations get on that bus. <coughs> so AI will be bigger and hotter because, it, because think about it, 90% of the world's data was created in the last two years. 80% of that is unstructured. So you have to be able to deal with that. A um, couple of examples. Um, this is a, an audit-based company, one of the big four. Again, can't mention the name um, because 
they're saving a shitload of money and they're still charging their customers the same amount of money. Um, they're using a combination of RPA, machine learning, and natural language processing. And they're achieving an 85% accuracy rate compared with using IBM Watson, which they used before, where they're achieving 25%. And it's a lot, lot cheaper. 45% of their core audit business is now automated. Actually, it's in India. But interesting stuff. This one I can talk about uh, is an insurance company called Hollard, H-O-L-L-A-R-D, uh, based in South Africa. Uh, our implementation partner is, a, is an organization called Lark, L-I, A-I, so it's L-A-R-C and then A-I. <coughs> what they've done, they are using Watson actually, plus uh, Microsoft Cognitive Toolkit uh, and Abby, which is an intelligent OCR platform, um, for emails. So this is utterly unstructured data. This is emails coming into their organization, so you've got to work out what the named entity recognition is, the natural language processing, the sentiment analysis, correlate that, coordinate it, and that's done by us, the RPA vendor. Um, and as it says there, the results have been absolutely staggering. 98% of those emails never see a human anymore. And the transaction cost has gone down by 91%. I don't know what it was before, but it's still pretty impressive. Um, but this is just the start of what we're starting to see. So um, linear temporal logic, you probably won't have heard of it, um, but LTL is something that Julie Shaw and her team are working on at MIT. Um, what's interesting about that is it's not artificial intelligence. What it is is artificial intuition. So the best example of that is Dennis Hesebis and his team with, uh, with DeepMind because it's the difference between the AlphaGo, which won the, uh, the Go Championship, the machine that was designed and built by humans, and AlphaGo Zero, which is based on LTL, which taught itself just by playing itself over and over and over again. Um, and it took two weeks for AlphaGo Zero to beat AlphaGo. Um, so LTL is the future. You can think about it like RPA mimics the activity of the humans in our organizations physically. I know it's physically moving information through and between the multiple systems in your organization. LTL mimics the cognitive thought mimics the activity of decision making. So we're right at the start of this, but this is the future over the next two, three, four, ten years. Um, Craig, who we're doing a lot of work with, Craig LeClaire uh, of Forrester, um, talks about it in terms of ecosystems. So we actually have four, like the, the birds on this line, on these lines. So we've got our development community, um, which are about 150,000 people around the world all using UiPath as a technology to automate stuff. Um, we've got our implementation partners, the consulting organizations, the outsourcers, the system integration companies. Uh, and they're training up their people as fast as they possibly can because RPA is a really good first step on the digital transformation journey. They own the relationship with your C-suites. We don't. We don't need to. They own the relationship with your C-suites. And they want to take your organization through the digital transformation. As Diego said, you know, there's a reason that, that that uh, Uber and Amazon have become verbs. You do not want to get Ubered. So digital transformation is, is necessary and it's an ongoing process. So that's what the consultants want to get into. RPA is a really good first step. By far, the best, most effective way of demonstrating that is to actually take a video of not the average person within your organization doing a particular task, but the best person. The best person in your organization at doing a particular task you video them doing that task. Then you automate it using whatever technology you decide that you're going to use, and then video that too. And then you can take that to the board, and they go, oh, yes, please, we want some more of this. It is that simple. It's not that simple, but it's that effective. The other two um, ecosystems are the AI companies. So it's the Humleys, the Enates, the, uh, the Abbeys, um, the Microsoft Cognitive Toolkits. All of these organizations want to bake themselves into our platform because we're growing so fast. We grew, our ARR grew by 850% last year. Um, and they're two years behind in terms of adoption. So they want to accelerate their adoption, then they're baking themselves into our platform. The big guys, the Oracles, the SAPs, the Salesforces, the ServiceNows, they want to bake our platform into theirs because we sell to operations people. 
business operations. We do not sell to IT. IT is really important, but we don't sell to IT people. So it offers them an entirely new route to market. That's why Oracle did the deal with us in September last year. Um, so anyone buying Oracle Cloud, robots are already there. You just need to switch them on, and they rock and roll. So interesting stuff. Skills gap. Um, this is actually a quote from, um, uh, from Tech UK. Um, and in order to do this effectively, you need people inside your organization or partners who are trained up and ready to go. So the proudest thing I've done in the organization, I've been in the organization since pretty much it, it started moving into RPA in 2015, was that I said, you've got to give away all our training. So all of our training is free. Uh, it's called UiPath Academy. And it deals not only with the technology people, so in other words, how you develop robots uh, and how you implement them, but also the business issues. So what are the skills you need within your organization? How do you communicate that with your people? And so on and so forth. That's all part of Academy 360 uh, Degrees, which came out last week. Uh, we iterate fairly fast. Um, so Academy is really good. And by the way, the consulting companies I mentioned, so the EYs, the, the Deloitte's, the PwC's, and so on, they are training up thousands of people on this stuff with us and, and with our competitors because it's so critical to the way they see their business. About four years ago, I wrote a paper saying that I thought that automation and AI was going to be as important to the consulting companies as ERP was in the 90s. Um, and unsurprisingly, I got laughed at because we were teeny tiny. Uh, but that's exactly what we're seeing now. Um, this is the Dave Johnson stuff. So Dave and I got together, had breakfast at, uh, in Chicago, and um, he said that what he was working on was culture as opposed to technology. He didn't really want to know about technology. And I said, well, that's exactly what we're seeing. So organizations are using these technologies to actually adapt and, and change the culture of their organization. Uh, and so he and I are going to be working on a, on a thought leadership paper um, towards the end of this year, because um, he's got the facts, we've got the examples. And one of those examples, oh, hang on. Uh, that's Andrew Eng, by the way, of Stanford, saying that all of this stuff's going to disappear, a bit like electricity or water. No one cares where it comes from, as long as you really turn on the tap, the water comes out. Um, so ultimately, hang on, hang on. No, never mind. Uh, ultimately, we're going to go to the situation where one robot per employee. So pretty much everyone's got a computer now, laptop, tablet, whatever. Um, almost everyone's going to do that, move to a robot that will help them, will do the crappy tasks that they don't want to do in the first place, and then will assist them in the work that they do today. That's the addressable market for this stuff. Uh, and that's why the private equity and the, uh, private and the venture capital co companies are so excited by this. Um, quick plug for Pascal. So Pascal's doing a uh, deep dive at 11.30 this morning, 11.20, um, looking at robotic quotient. So I don't know which room he's in, but make sure you, um, you, you go to that, because it's very interesting in the work that, that Forrest is doing. Um, and oh, here, here is the example, um, just in the wrong order. So this is, this is the possibility of, this is what you get when you put automation in. So Carl Nolan is the chief executive of Generali Link. Generali is, a, is an organization that uh, we're working with across multiple European countries. It's a, a 80 billion um, euro turnover uh, Italian insurance business uh, headquartered out of Trieste. Um, the mood music has changed in all organizations. Actually, he, t he told me to take the last um, two words, three words off that quote. Because the quote said, uh, we now measure our terms in, in terms of compliments rather than complaints. That is a dramatic departure for an organization. So that, if you can take anything away, is all about culture change. That's why organizations go into RPA for the wrong reasons, but they end up with the right outcomes. Um, right. Beside you, or you're sitting on them, is a report. Um, when I say that Forrester is leading the way, this is my quote, by the way. When I say that Forrester is leading the way in terms of RPA and AI adoption, I absolutely mean it. They are way, way ahead of the competitor, of competition. Um, so you've got Craig and Claire looking at the now tech. That's the RPA type activities. You've got Shri and her team looking at the uh, AI elements. And those will merge over the next uh, weeks, months, and years. Um, 
So take those away. It's really, really good. It doesn't even mention UiPath, but it's very good, very good paper. Um, we heard about the hair. Uh, I didn't even know we heard about the hair, but this is the photograph I used to describe me. So as well as I, my, me standing on, on stage talking at, at people, um, I spend most of my time listening. So any questions, if you'd like to find out more. Um, Shankar, stand up. Stand up, stand up. Michael, stand up. Michael, stand up. Shankar and Michael and I are on our stand if you have any questions. But thank you very much indeed. <laughs>